Oke, okay, everyone already connected. Please, Dr. Arya, to start the meeting. Ya. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. We are about to proceed our session today. So, everyone, please unmute your speaker. So, sorry, mute. Sorry, mute. <laughs> mute your speakers, your, your mic. Yeah. And my name is Arya Kekali. I'm from Universitas Indonesia. I'm a co-chair for this session, the oral dental session. This is about the oral health care for disability and uh, <coughs> special need patients. So we have a lot of uh, participants here from Hang Tua University, from Air Langa, from National Tainan, uh, Taiwan University, uh, from Taibo University, Arab Saudi. Saudi Arabia and Hiroshima University uh, from Harapan Kita and for Kagoshima University and we have tight schedule yeah so uh, we have like eight speakers so please be punctual on your time so I give an opportunity to the pioneer to the initiator of this session is Dr. Aksa Shuhada uh, will be chairing this session please Dr. Aksa Thank you, Dr. Arya. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> good morning and good afternoon to some of you. We gather here to join the APEN 44 Dental Telemedicine Session. Ten connected sites are here to actively participate. The today's topic is all about integrated dental treatment for handicapped and special needs patients. We have some honorary speakers who will share their clinical experience, reports, or research according to the topic. Each speaker will have 10 to 15 minutes to deliver their presentation. To run the session, I'm assisted by my two co-chairs. The first one is Dr. Arya Kakali. I believe you uh, already know him very well. And the second one is Dr. Miftah Cahewati. Dr. Miftah, please introduce yourself and say hello to the audience. Dr. Miftah. Okay. It seems that Dr. Bibla is not ready. So, <clears throat> since we have a very limited time, we only have uh, uh, 90 minutes. We go to the first speaker from Kagoshima University. He is the Dr. Hideo Sato, a senior assistant professor at the Department of Pediatric Dentistry, Kagoshima University, Japan. He is currently in Kago uh, California, USA. And he is using the combination between Skype and video desktop to join us. Dr. Sato, are you ready for your presentation? So, I'm so uh, uh, far from this kind of area. So, now I'm in the United States. So, but so I'm honored to participate in this uh, meeting. And thank you for uh, staff of Bank and thank you for Professor Nakamura. Thank you for uh, Professor Masaki. So uh, I, I uh, uh, make a so presentation, uh, including my voice. So please, uh, uh, I show the presentation. Uh, please see it. So uh, let's start, please. Okay, thank you. Dr. Sato, you have 10 to 15 minutes for your presentation. Please proceed. Please proceed, yes. Okay. My name is Hideo Sato. I'm a faculty of Kagoshima University, Department of Pediatric Dentistry. But I'm in Stanford Medicine as visiting scholar. So please check my video message. My clinic has been concerned about oral health of children and disabled persons in various approach treatment. Kagoshima located southwest of Japan. Kagoshima have a long distance area including many islands and remote areas. 
this distance brings us the diversity of nature and culture. You know, international classification of functioning recommend that social environment respect of each character and help their activities. We dental profession must to support their health, their social participants through our skills. I show the four types of special needs dentistry I experienced. Firstly, carrier's treatment in general anesthesia at Island Hospital. Previously, I said that our Kagoshime has long distance area and many islands. Many people need to dental treatment, but they can't visit our hospital because of geographical economical condition. Amami Oshima is most biggest island of Kagoshima, highly birth rate, but low income, and has no pediatric dentist. So we try to carry our base to island hospital, supported by hospital staff and others. This is the background of a patient, six years, three months twins. Young brother has developmental disorder and rampant caries. Single parent mother is in the hospital because of mental disorder. The twins are in the nursing home. This is operation room. We try to operate them in one day. Younger brother is first. You can see rampant carriers. This is after treatment condition. This is the outcome. All tooths were filled or kept or extracted. Total time is 3 hours 45 minutes. This is next case, elder sister in same day. This is after treatment condition. This is the outcome. Time is 1 hour 40 minutes. Total time in a day is 5 hour 25 minutes. We achieved two cases whole mouth treatment in one day. This result is supported by interdisciplinary staff. So we proved that we can transplant our skill to remote area in these conditions. The second topic is obstructive sleep apnea syndrome with a Down syndrome child. You know, obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, abbreviated OSAS, is one of the sleep disorders and inhibiting growth and development. And OSAS of Down syndrome people have higher rate compared with normal. This figure shows typical type of upper LA with Down syndrome, hypergrowth of maxillary, low tongue posture, you can see, result increasing of difficulty of ventilation. This is my patient case, 12 years old boy, he has usually mouth breathing and high snore in night time. So, I refer to otolaryngology to check ulcers.
This is mass condition. You can see malocclusion and macroglossia and hyperconsider. This is a cephalogram. You can see hypergrowth of maxilla in anteroposterior and lateral. This is procedure of treatment. We evaluate patient condition using CT data before and after treatment. You can see hypergrowth of adenoidal and tonsil. This is a result of sleep disorder index. Apnea and hypopnea is 30 times power. This is a severe case. As a previous result, we try to apply rapid maxillary expansion, resulting 4.4 millimeter expansion laterally. After expansion, we evaluated sleep test again, so dramatically decreasing the index. We detected the reason why index was decreased using my upper airway fluid simulation analysis. This is a reconstruct of CT data anatomically and simulate through finite element and through dynamic analysis. Before and after expansion, you can see ventilation speed and pressure changed. In the result of expansion, nasal cavity increasing and obstructive area decreased. So maxillary expansion is an effective way of also treatment. Next chain is dysphagia rehabilitation for developmental age. We have been concerned with dysphagia children because we can see the dysphagia factor at our stage. So we take advice as our specialist. However, it is difficult to result with only one specialist, so we cooperate with many kinds of specialists and facilities, so called interdisciplinary approach. This is an instruction in special needs school. We often use a plate for supporting swallowing and habitation. The last we show our study recently. Now we are studying the compact 3D camera for medical application. This camera can track of face connection automatically without marker. We take the connection of inside and outside of body simultaneously by 3D camera and video fluorography. Taking a record at once and synthesize using a software and analysis. We can synchronize the uh, video photograph image and 3D camera image and uh, rip motion in one window. Near future, we apply this system for application of home medicine. Special needs dentistry may exist for the reason why all people should have been taken 
of dental medicine equally. So we should try to take all things and develop philosophy for humanism, our skills and technologies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sato, for your wonderful presentation, for the wonderful lecture, and letting us know that you have done something big to help handicapped persons in your area. We really appreciate it. Uh, the next presentation will be delivered by Dr. Tania Saskianti. She is the senior lecturer of pediatric dentistry at Erlangga University. She would like to report her clinical activity in the Erlangga Dental Hospital in treating handicapped patient. Dr. Tania, please proceed. You have 10 to 15 minutes for your presentation. Okay, uh, good morning everyone, all colleagues from around the world. Uh, this morning I would like to present my case presentation about dental treatment for autistic children under general anesthesia. At first, we would like to inform what is autism. According to Gupta in 2016, Autism was characterized by the deficits in social communication and social interaction. They have restricted repetitive behavior, interests, and activities. And sometimes, potentially, they have coexisting with the sensory disabilities, mental retardation, or epilepsy. The autistic children, sometimes they have oral manifestations such as uh, dental carriers, and then they have a self-injurious behavior, bruxism, and then eruption. Uh, as long as the heavy plug accumulation because of the consumption of low texture and pure food. Sometimes uh, we have to equip the dental clinic very well as a dental management to treat the autistic patient. Uh, and then we have to notice about the child's likes or dislike and then we have to consider about the trigger zone of the patient and then we have to ask the parents to desensitize the child by educating them about the dental procedure in easy way so if possible we can treat autistic children by same set of people and dentists we have to notice that the children with the autistic they do not like crowd so we have to schedule uh, the visit, the dental visit, maybe in the morning or the relative free or less busy hour. We should give a clear and short and simple instruction and then maybe we can ask the parent available in the operatory room. If all the management behavior cannot handle the autistic patient, we can use the sedation dentistry or the general anesthesia to perform comprehensive, uninterested, and quality dental treatment to provide a long-term prognosis for the dental. Here is the patient identity. Uh, the child AZ is a male, nine years old, and then he come to uh, Erlanga University Dental Hospital, uh, referred from the Islamic Hospital Jombang, this is the small city near Surabaya, about two hours by car. He uh, complaining about the gingival abscess in the Regio 46, and then we did the access opening and then dry nasal, and then we give uh, the patient uh, deflam. This is uh, anti-inflammation of 50 milligram. Previously, uh, two years ago, he received the dental treatment under general anesthesia also in the uh, Islamic Hospital Jombang. But now the parents ask for complete and comprehensive dental treatment for the children. Since, the, since he come from the, another city, from Surabaya, so the parents ask for the complete 
treatment. The children, they, uh, he doesn't have the systemic uh, condition, history, instead of the delays in walking and speech, and also the motoric. He doesn't have the medicine treatment regularly, so I think he is uh, okay for receive the uh, general anesthesia. The weight is 33 kilograms with 140 centimeter, centimeter high, and then the temperature was normal. Here is the patient. So the extra oral examination shown facial asymmetry. It's very difficult to take picture of this patient. At that time, uh, we give the Zitromax tablet. This is the antibiotic and the anti-inflammation to re relieve the abscess. And then this is the extra oral examination. We uh, took it in the waiting room. And then this is the intraoral examination. Uh, we can see the lip and oral mucus, mucosa was normal, but, they ha but he has the gingivitis due to bad oral hygiene almost on all his uh, gingiva. And then this is the uh, 46 element. We can see the um, abscess and radiolucent in the periapical. Uh, we can see the 46 and 36. He has he suffered from gangrene bulk, and then 60, uh, 16 and 26, he has a pulpitis. So this is the dental treatment planning for the patient. At first, we will do the communication instruction and dental health education for parents. And then we will do the fissure sealant, uh, class two composite restoration, class one composite restoration, and class five composite restoration. And then we continue with the scaling and then extraction for the 36 and 46. In the last, we can do the topical floor application. And then in July 70, uh, he was scheduled to receive general anesthesia on July 18, but uh, the patient had a fever and cough, so the pediatrician gave the therapy to, to give him uh, antibiotic and then uh, anti-cough to resolve the cough and fever at first. And then in July 19, the cough is already relieved and then the influenza as well. So he will be sent to the general anesthesia. And then on uh, July 20, we did the pre-induction evaluation. The, uh, the patient has a good temperature and then good pulse. They have no abnormalities in the ECG, and then the thorax photo shows no abnormalities. So we give the patient the prophylaxis antibiotic and then do the anesthesia. Here is the anesthesia given. And then uh, this is also the medicament for the anesthesia. Before the treatment start, the patient was uh, signed the informed consent and then we did the aseptic uh, section and then we did the composite, resin composite filling and then fissure sealant on 15 and then we continue with fissure sealant on uh, tip number 45 and then we did scaling on the upper and lower right. We did the composite resin restoration on teeth number 21. Also for the teeth number 26, we did the composite resin restoration and then we continue with fissure sealant on number, teeth number 25, scaling on upper and lower left area. And then we do the extraction on the permanent teeth 36 and 46. 
because uh, the prognosis is not good and then the patient is difficult to maintain the good oral health. At last, we did the topical fluoride application to all of the teeth. So this is the post-op anesthesia. So uh, the patient was recovered very well and then uh, the patient are allowed to go home after one hour uh, hospitalized. And then we control the patient one week after post-operation and then we did we do suggestion for the post-op instruction. We suggest the patient to uh, eat the soft diet, no hot meal or drink, no sucking in the surgical wound, and no hard gargling. Thank you very much for your time. Nice to see you all. Thank you. Dr. Tania Saskianti for your clinical report presentation. Hopefully you and your team will gain more success in the future. Good job. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the next presenter come from the National Taiwan University. Yes, Dr. Xin Ming Chen, who is currently appointed as the assistant professor at the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. Dr. Chen, please deliver your presentation and 10 to 15 minutes. Please proceed. Dr. Min Chen from Taiwan University. Uh, it's my great pleasure to have to talk here. And in my talk, I would like to talk something about the oral health care system in, for special needs in Taiwan. Uh, we know the care system uh, in special needs. It is very complicated. We needed the help from the government policy. We help, needed the help from the dental system, and we also uh, needed the help from the health issues. And we have a, we need to have a good uh, education. So uh, in this talk, I would like to uh, talk something uh, about the brief history uh, history of oral health care system for special needs in Taiwan. And I also want to talk about the mode of a, a service system for a special need in Taiwan. The third part, I would like to talk some uh, education system for special care dentistry in Taiwan. And the final part, I would like to talk the research uh, for special care dentistry uh, in our uh, center. Uh, we also know that ta Taiwan is a small island, and usually we separate the area into the north part and Middle no, part, can you? South part. Sorry, can you hear me? Sorry, uh, can you put the slide into the full screen because we we off we right now we put the slide in the full screen. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. That's Not yet. So, do you see our? Sorry? Yes, we see our, your presentation now, but it's not in the full screen. Full screen PowerPoint. Full screen. Can you check again? In the full screen? It's full screen? So no, no, no. You need to share your. We should share, should share. Maybe uh, Mr. Chiang can, can help. Please start. Uh, slide okay. 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 It's okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. Please proceed. Okay. 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 I can go through. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we usually are separated the Taiwan in north part, middle part, and south part and the uh, eastern part. So uh, in Taiwan, uh, the in 1988, the 
embryonic form of the first oral health care center for special needs was established in National Taiwan University Hospital. Uh, this is our new uh, care center. Uh, right now we are uh, have the top in this area. In this center we have different devices for the special needs. Like we have the uh, system to let the patient and sit on the wheelchair and to have the dental treatment. We also have the uh, room for sedation or general anesthesia. We also have uh, the uh, panoramic array system, the patient can lie down and to check the panoramic x ray. So uh, in 1988, the first uh, embryonic form of uh, care center, uh, it, it is named the uh, uh, sedation and anesthetic clinic. Uh, in 1994, we changed the name to Dental uh, Clinical for Disability. Uh, in 1995, uh, the Kaohsiung uh, Medical University, uh, Chonghe Memory Hospital, and uh, Zhongshan uh, Medical University uh, Dental Hospital uh, also established uh, the similar clinic uh, for special needs. Uh, in 2009, uh, Having University Hospital, Shanghe uh, uh, Hospital, uh, also uh, established a similar uh, dental clinic. They called it the Center, a uh, whole health care center for uh, special needs. In 2011, uh, National Taiwan University Hospital, uh, Kaohsiung Medical University, Zhonghe uh, Memory uh, Hospital, and Zhongshan uh, Medical uh, University uh, Dental Hospital. Uh, we also uh, have the support from uh, Taiwan Ministry of Health and Health uh, to, to establish a new uh, oral health care center for uh, special needs. In 2012, uh, the uh, Memo, uh, Mennonite uh, Christian Hospital also get the uh, financial support uh, from uh, Ministry of uh, Health and well, uh, Welfare uh, to, to uh, set the same uh, oral health care center for special needs. In uh, 2015, uh, National Young University, uh, National Chengong University Hospital also get the support and to set the oral health care center for special needs. So uh, in the north part of Taiwan, they are uh, National Taiwan University Hospital and their uh, Medical University uh, Shanghe, uh, Hospital. In the middle part of Taiwan, uh, we are uh, Zhongshan Medical and the Dental University Dental Hospital. And in south part of Taiwan, they are National Chenggong University Hospital and Kaohsiung Medical University Zhongshan uh, Memorial Hospital. And in the East part of Taiwan, they are uh, National Yangming uh, University Hospital, and they are uh, Menon Right Christian Hospital in the north part of Taiwan. So right now we have seven uh, care centers for uh, special needs, but we also have uh, several uh, local hospitals. They can uh, care the special needs. But we also have a uh, dental uh, clinic about uh, 800 uh, dental clinic. They also uh, have the special care, uh, special need, uh, uh, special need patient. We also have uh, several uh, dental service group. They can do the home care, and they can do go to the institute to care the special need patient. So in Taiwan, there are two uh, systems. One is uh, supported by Ministry of Health and the Welfare. So Health center and local hospital is the Minister of Health and Welfare. And we have another uh, project that is supported by the National Health Insurance Administration. So all the dental uh, clinic or the hospital can get uh, the uh, financial support uh, to treat the patient uh, of special needs. So in the care system, uh, we divide uh, two 
uh, kind of uh, KO system. It depends on the green go head. They are, uh, if they have the sedation or general synthesis uh, device. So if the uh, KO system have uh, sedation and, and general synthesis, they are the advanced uh, dental care system. Otherwise, they are the primary dental uh, care system. In the clinical level, there are three uh, levels. Uh, in the center, uh, health center, like the heart, uh, the seven uh, care center, they are the third level of uh, dental service. Uh, the local hospital is the second level of uh, dental service. And the dental clinic and some dental uh, group, they belong to the first level of uh, dental service. It means the basic big basic treat of the, for the special needs. Uh, we pay much attention about the patient's uh, oral hygiene care. So we have oral hygienists to care the special needs. If the patient cannot uh, clean their tooth, we teach the uh, health giver to let them to clean the tooth of the special needs. If the special needs can clean their tooth, we, do, we teach the special needs to clean their tooth uh, by themselves. We also have a guideline. We translated the guideline to many kind of language, include the Chinese, English, uh, Korean, uh, and Vietnam, and Indonesia uh, language. This is the patient uh, we train his oral hygiene care. This patient can uh, clean his tooth by himself. So uh, first we let the patient clean his tooth and check well. Uh, the dental prep and use the uh, the scroll agent to let them know uh, where they did not clean their tooth and let them to clean their tooth again. Then check let them do let them to know how to clean their tooth. We also go to the nursing care institute to teach the caregiver to teach the patient to clean uh, their uh, oral hygiene. So we have the form to check the oral hygiene. Uh, we uh, to check the swallowing, the teeth, the tongue, the saturation, uh, mucosa, teeth, gingiva, and the smell. Uh, we can find that the uh, uh, tongue and saturation uh, have a fair uh, kappa value. So uh, the other side have a good, uh, perfect uh, kappa value. Uh, in our our uh, care system is a multi discipline. So, uh, if the patient, we divide the treatment into the general treatment and uh, the treatment on the sedation and general anesthesia, all the specialty can share the a duty to treat all the special needs. So, if the patient can uh, have a good uh, behavior, uh, behavior modification, we can treat them in the dental clinic. Otherwise, we can use a post pose and we can use the system like the, uh, this one, and we can let the uh, patient uh, in the uh, wheelchair and to have the treatment uh, in their uh, wheelchair. Uh, if the patient cannot uh, get a good cooperation, or the treatment is complicated, or the treatment much uh, take much uh, have to take um, much time, we let the patient have the treatment on the uh, sedation and general anesthesia. So most of the patients are, are multiple disease. The second is SD patient. The third is the intelligent insufficiency. In the severity, we can find uh, mostly they are severe. Uh, the second is moderate, and the third is extremely severe. So we uh, care most moderate and severe patient in our care system. We also have an association for the special needs. So everybody has to qualify to get the specialty uh, to be a specialist in this area. And in our uh, teaching course, uh, we uh, divide uh, the uh, course into uh, five uh, fields. The one is about the special needs dentistry, the, the second is the hospital dentistry, and the geriatric dentistry and long-term care dentistry, and 
the early intervention care system, we call our course uh, special care dentistry. Uh, most of the uh, dentist school have the course to treat the, the student to learn how to care the special need patient. Uh, we also do some uh, research, um, just uh, but it did not like the purpose school. But in our study, we find that when we use the purpose school, uh, we can, under the, the uh, dependent reflex, to let the patient to get much more the path synthetic uh, to compensate their uh, synthetic uh, system. So, uh, a football can reduce the anxiety of the special need patient. Uh, we also analyze our patient under the sedation or general anesthesia. We can find that uh, mostly we treat the patient under SA1, 2, 3. Mostly they are SA1. And Mostly the patient is over the 18 uh, years old, and we can find that the patient mostly uh, they have the epilepsy. Uh, they also have some patient with cerebral palsy, and in the uh, Down syndrome, the patient mostly are uh, uh, under the 18 uh, years old. Uh, we also can. Finally, the treatment mostly uh, is dental restoration. The second is uh, endodontic treatment. The third is uh, the juice extraction. So uh, in our uh, care system, uh, in special need, uh, we firstly established this system uh, since uh, 1988. Right now, we have uh, seven oral health care centers uh, district in every part of Taiwan. And all these centers are supported by the government and the national insurance. We pay much more attention to the oral health care. We consider the oral health care is the most important thing. It is uh, important than the other uh, dental treatments. If the patient can get a good oral hygiene care, they can get a good oral health. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Chen, for uh, being on time in your presentation. Uh, thank you again for sharing the great health system in Taiwan to help handicapped patients to gain uh, a better oral health. We really appreciate your works. <coughs> uh, the next presenter is uh, Dr. Yuki Oda. She is from Special Care Dentistry at Hiroshima University Hospital, Japan. Dr. Oda, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Yeah, okay. Okay, please make your presentation in 10 to 15 minutes. Thank you. Okay. Hello, I'm Yuki Oda. I am medical director and associate professor in special care dentistry in Hiroshima University Hospital, Japan. It is a great pleasure for me to have this opportunity to talk to you about our research. I would like to thank the organizing committee for arranging this meeting. Our time is limited, so I would like to start. First of all, I would like to introduce Hiroshima City and our hospital. Hiroshima Prefecture is situated in the southwestern part of Japan. Hiroshima is famous for atomic bomb dome. Hiroshima University Hospital is the biggest hospital in Hiroshima and has 30 medical departments and 30 dental departments in it. Special care dentistry is one of the departments. As background information, I would like to give you an overview of this field in my country. In Japan, the population of individuals with disabilities is about 6% of total population. Although there are many dentists in Japan, 
only 0.1% are working in this field. Here is the principles of special care dentistry that we have adopted at Hiroshima University Hospital. Our service improves quality of life for individuals with disability and encourage collaboration with medical and social communities. And Kyushu University, would you please start the video, please? No, please stop sharing uh, presentation from uh, Hiroshima. Okay. Here is an interesting video. We would like to apologize for the patient's face according to the policy of this committee. So it may be a little bit difficult to see what's going on. It features a 10-year-old boy with severe autistic spectrum disorder. He is quite nervous and feels very uneasy regarding the dental treatment he is about to receive. He turns the pages of his favorite magazine with his fingers in order to try to calm himself. A dental hygienist explains about the dental treatment by using picture cards. This boy has hypersensitivity in hearing, a typical symptom of autism. If oral information from the surrounding environment becomes excessive, he covers his ears and coordinates the information by himself. He doesn't seem to be concerned, concerned about those picture cards, though at a glance he can understand their contents. He knows that he cannot escape from the dental treatment. When the dental hygienist finished explaining, he lays down by himself. And the treatment was started. They are counting 10 in Japanese. That is called counting technique. When he could stand 10 seconds without moving, the dentist immediately admired him. I have one question. Uh, can you hear the sound from the video? No. No. No sound? Yeah. Kyushu University, um, is it possible? It's, sorry, it's difficult to set up from now. Okay. We don't, we didn't know we needed to show the sound. Okay, then no sound, sorry. Uh, what kind of management can we arrange for him in order to have a good experience? And we will stop sharing. Please, Hiroshima, continue sharing. Now, I would like to introduce the inside of our clinic. This is the entrance door, and this is the exit door. The dummy button doesn't work because the patient sometimes tries to escape. This is the waiting room. There is a video camera, so we can check this room from consultation room.
And this is the reception of our claim. Arrangement of appointments is quite difficult in our department because there are various patients. Some patient is very nervous for others screaming, and some patients cannot stop shouting when he feels anxious. So we have our own reception to avoid troubles. This is the interview room. At the first visit to our clinic, dental residents perform a medical interview using a sheet shown later. We have five units. This is number one. We use this room with the door kept closed for patients with hypersensitivity in hearing or patients who cannot stop screaming. And we also use this room for intravenous sedation, which we need to collaborate with dental anesthesia department. This is number two unit. This is only one unit which has subitum because most of the patients cannot rinse out. This is number three, four, and five. When the patient cannot concentrate on treatment, we use the rolling screen to limit the information from surroundings. This is medical interview sheet. This usually takes around 30 minutes. We can obtain a good amount of information from this interview. After information gathering, the doctor is immediately contacted and the state of the background disease is confirmed. A monitor is set up at each dental chair. With this, we can know whether they are having difficulty with breathing and gauge their level of nervousness even when they don't speak. I would like to explain how to perform this physical intervention later with video. We treat patients with cerebral palsy under the pelvic position so as to decrease the primitive reflection. Here is a systematic desensitization technique for dental instruments. If the patient is able to overcome the anxiety, we immediately express admiration and encourage them. Sometimes we use a tell show do technique when introducing a new instrument. And we sometimes use visual assistance to support patients' understanding, as you saw in previous video. In the waiting room of our clinic, two photos of every staff member are displayed like this. Structuring and prospecting is very important in TEACH program, which is the program to support patients with autistic spectrum disorder. Today, time is so limited, so I won't talk about each structure, structuring. And Kyushu University, the next video, please. Yes, we will share now. Please stop sharing. In this video, we will see a 35-year-old patient with autistic spectrum disorder. We cover the fire alarm button with a picture card that says, don't touch in Japanese. Without the card, he had pressed the fire alarm several times, causing the alarm to ring throughout the hospital. Before treatment, the patient put his towel on his chest and carefully looks at the card. And he lays down. Then an interesting thing, interesting thing happens. He stands up and goes back to the waiting room. This is his routine. The dental hygienist understands about his routine so does not bother or stop him. He calms himself down and after making up his mind, comes back to the dental chair and lays down again. 
After that, he never steps up until the dentist says that the treatment is finished. Although the treatment is done, this is not the end for him. He needs to know the next scheduled appointment. After learning the date and the time of next treatment, he is relieved and the treatment session is completed for him. We sometimes need to we sometimes need to administer drugs for conscious sedation. For patients who are very nervous and cannot even enter the examination room, we use diazepam. For patients for whom diazepam isn't effective, we use mitazola by intramuscular injection. In the third video, please. Please uh, turn off Serene. Thank you. I would like to explain how to use nitrous oxide. She is a patient with red syndrome. Red syndrome is a rare, severe neurological disorder that affects mostly girls. Most children with Red syndrome tend to wring or rub their hands together. She is nervous for dental treatment, so we use nitrous oxide. When we use nitrous oxide, we put the monitor probe on patient's finger so we can see how nervous she is. We fix the probe with a tape like this. Nitrous oxide is useful for children four years and older. It can also be used in patients with a strong gagging reflex as well as in those with cerebral palsy to avoid an intentional movement. And the next video, please. Prof. Oda, I have to remind you that your time is only one minute. Okay, then this is the last video. I would like to explain how to rub patients with using nitrous oxide. The patient walks to the dental chair very smoothly and lays down by himself. He takes off his socks because he knows that he will place a monitor probe on his toe. We then rub the patient with sheet from both sides. and fasten the belt tightly. It is important to act quickly, otherwise some may try to escape. One stop fix the nozzle mask onto the patient's nose with a tape and the other fix the monitor probe. The patient doesn't appear to be nervous 
but later you will see how nervous he actually is. I would like you to see his pulse. His pulse is over 170. When a patient cannot breathe well through the nose, we cover the mouth with a wet towel and help them to breathe through their nose. At our clinic, three staff members are assigned to take care of a single patient. One performs the treatment, one absorbs saliva and avoids the patient's lips, and another one holds mouth opener. After tooth cleaning is finished, his pulse has lowered to 140. And then the dental treatment was started. We typically use 30% nitrous oxide and supply 100% oxygen for two minutes after the treatment is done. However, nitrous oxide is a greater than 40%. We supply oxygen for three minutes or more. Sorry, we will, from Hiroshima, stop sharing, and you will, you want to run to, for the video file? And the goal of special care dentistry, not merely dental treatment for disabled patients, but also provide rehabilitation and dental health planning after considering specific patient characteristics. If you have any question or request, please do not hesitate to mail to this address shown below. Thank you for very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, <coughs> Dr. Oda, Dr. Yuki Oda, for your video presentation to describe your clinical works and experience. I believe it is so inspiring to us. Very inspiring, inspiring to us. Thank Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, okay, thank you. After four clinical reports, we also need to get some research update in handicapped industry. We have Associate Professor Dermawan Setianto, the Dean of Faculty of Dental Medicine at Langa University. He would like to present some of his research projects. He will describe how oral health status in childhood may affect oral health status in adulthood. It is strongly related to the discussion right now. Associate Professor Dr. Darmawan, are you ready? Hello, I'm ready. Yes. Please okay. For your presentation in 10 to 15 minutes, Professor. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Selamat pagi. Ohayo gozaimas. Thank you for this opportunity. This morning, we, Dr. Gilang and I, will deliver uh, promotive methods, the community empowering program to improve oral hygiene in visually impaired students aged 12 until 15 years old uh, junior high school using the decade dental study models. 
We conduct in Surabaya City, East Java, Indonesia. Faculty of Dental Medicine, Universitas Erlangga, we have a unique perspective of research-based community empowerment. We conduct, at first, the dental health community research, dental health need assessment. Then, we we conduct the research-based assessment-based dental health community empowering program. We analyze the data to propose the health community empowering program. And then, we implementing the dental health community program, we make some monitoring and evaluation and also acceleration. What we found in the dental health need assessment study, we found that oral hygiene index simplified score in visually impaired students in YPAB, Sukalilo, Surabaya, we found that we have a group of uh, poor of oral hygiene index. Maybe you uh, in, in the in the uh, slide it showed increasing and then decreasing, but it's very slightly and uh, it's still in the poor uh, group of oral hygiene index simplified. And then we also found dental health assessment in the visual impaired student score of DMF, it should increasing year by year. So we have data from 2012, 2013, and 2014. Uh, the DMF is focus or uh, focus or measuring in the D DK. That's the meaning we we have some problem in the health behavior and especially in the dental health behavior. We also found self behavior risk factors and belief in visually impaired children. We found from thirty two visually impaired students only toothbrushing in daily shower time. 100%. Difficult in doing toothbrushing before bedtime at night without company. 45%. And easy removing stuck food debris in the interdental space and decayed for uh, 54%. And then avoid toothbrushing and decayed because it may lead to dental bleeding or infection, which may causing dental pain is 87%. <coughs> In my framework of thinking, that disability in self, uh, dis uh, the, the student have disability in self-visualizing uh, intraoral and dental situation. So, they have major perceived barrier in toothbrushing because afraid of injury caused by him, herself, identified 87% of subject. Low self-efficacy from uh, to perform adequate toothbrushing for food debris cleaning identified 45% of subject. So, as uh, in the uh, diagram before, an easy removing stock is 54% of subject. So, uh, we continue with the theoretical promotive program intervention of framework, intervention framework. So, we think that 
Disability in self-visualizing intraoral and dental situation, we should minimize perceived barrier in tooth brushing through food debris cleaning simulation using decayed dental study model. And then, we should rising self-efficacy to perform adequate tooth brushing for food debris cleaning. And then, we, we should uh, do some situation to more easy, easy to remove stuck food debris in the, in the dental space and decay to you. So, after this, we, we, we hope that we can reduce the oral health index simplified and also reducing the DMFT index. I think the protocol of program will be delivered by Dr. Kila. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, good morning for you all. Uh, I will uh, explain about what is decay dental study model is. Dental decay dental study model is modified common dental study model, and with additional decay teeth and crafted decay in. 11 places based on common decayed condition in your picture. This model acts as a, as a mirror in a normal person without visual impairment when he or she brushes their teeth. But in visually impaired person, good sensing and learning about normal and decayed in this model, firstly, and then learning how to brush adequately with obstacles in this model before he or she trying in their own teeth condition. And this is uh, the empowering method path for visually impaired students in tooth brushing. So this is the path uh, of our program uh, to improve uh, children with visually impaired uh, difficulty in tooth brushing, uh, especially in their uh, high perceived barrier of tooth brushing and low self-efficacy. First, we conduct the pre-program test and survey, and then they learning anatomy of normal teeth using the normal dental study model. And they learning anatomy of decay teeth in our uh, decay dental study model. And they trial uh, for tooth brushing in decay dental study model. And then sudden, uh, we ask to perform consuming biscuits as a uh, food debris in their own mouth. And then they perform tooth brushing, and finally, uh, we conduct post-program tests and survey about the condition in intraoral. I will okay. I will explain that uh, the mean score of perceived barrier of tooth brushing due to visual impairment after this program is decreasing. The perceived barrier is in the yellow line. Uh, and they show that uh, the mean score of perceived barrier is decreasing. And the second is the mean score of self-efficacy to perform tooth brushing despite of visual impairment increasing uh, dramatically. The floor is score as 15 and then nearly 25, which is uh, good for the program. And then the, oh, uh, uh, the mean of oral hygiene index simplified scores, also we uh, conduct the test and we record the numbers that the, oh, uh, the oral hygiene index simplified scores that uh, decreasing is from 3.1 and decreasing after program in 2.6 or 0.7 in here which is good for uh, the result of this program. And the result, maybe Dr. Zaman will be presented again. The result we have that there was significant difference in individual beliefs in students before and after of the empowerment. P is under 0.05. 
significant oral dental cleaning scales difference. P is under O and O5. And then significance OHI simplified mean score after the method was done mean uh, 2.125 and P also below the 0 0.05. So the conclusion, the decreasing score of self-perceived burial combining with the increasing score of self-efficacy in toothbrushing potentially resulting a better quality of toothbrushing in visually impaired students. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Associate Professor Mawad Setianto and Dr. Gilang for your wonderful research update to enrich the content of our meeting today. Uh, it looks like we are entering the discussion session which will which will be moderated by my second chair, Dr. Miftah Chah Chahyati. Is ready right now. Dr. Miftah Chahyati, are you ready? Dr. Miftah. Uh, she just uh, appeared, but she's gone right now. Uh, okay, Dr. Miftah Chayan, please proceed to the discussion session. Yes. Uh, sorry, I cannot hear anything from you. No, Vijaya University, with no sound from Vijaya. Still no sound. No sound. Pravijaya, no sound. Still no sound. Still no. Still no sound from Pravijaya. Mr. Boswit, can you fix it? No? No? No sound from Prabhijaya? Yeah. No. How about... Yeah. Maybe we, okay. well, we can proceed to the presentation of Professor Suharsini. Dr. Aksa? Yes, okay. Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Suharsini Sutopo from the University of Indonesia. Uh, are you ready to present your presentation? Professor Suharsini, are you ready? You are not here also. How about Dr. Kiki, uh, Dr. Kiki Pua? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you ready for your presentation? Inshallah. Okay. Please uh, deliver it in 10 minutes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Asa. So, University, can you start the presentation? <coughs> okay. Uh, it seems like harapan kita first. After harapan kita, it will be followed by University of Indonesia. Harapan kita 10 minutes, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ohayu gozaimasu. Zhao Xiang Hao, if I'm not mistaken. Today, I would like to share my little journey at Harapan Kita Hospital for Special Care Patients. As we know that the aim of special care dentistry is to provide the quality of our health and quality of life for all the people with, with intellectual, physically, and mentally disability. Disabled people want it for the, for the same reason as other people, irrespective age and gender. 
sorry. They want to look feel good about themselves and to be socially acceptable and also their mouth to be comfortable and enjoy their food. People with disability and complex additional needs should have equal access to oral health care services. This table shown the data of outpatient patient in, S, uh, in STD for the last three years. It tends to increase each year. So it means that there's a room for improvement in providing good quality special needs health care in Harapan Kita Hospital. These some cases at Harapan Kita Hospital as the third level of government hospital. We often get referral from second level hospital and from center cardiovascular, which is our neighbor. The yellow font is to mark the frequent patient who came to our hospital. Case number one, this is the case of Apert syndrome. I was using motivational interviewing technique to educate the parents and also the patient from the early age. This patient had a severe, uh, this patient had a several plastic surgery to separate the inductile finger on both hands. Case number two, this is a case patient with a heart disorder. Patient like this is the most frequent outpatient and mostly are found poor or hygiene with multiple carriers and gangrene pots and radix. So I have to manage in operating room. This step, child, this step, this step is child heart surgery preparation. Patient should dental check two weeks before operation, then for EMT check five days before operation, then check heart again one week before operation. Case number three, patient child with Down syndrome and also heart disorder. We use general anesthesia to clean all the focal infection. Case number four, child patient with Down syndrome also have a poor oral hygiene and multiple gum pulp and radix and dental abscess in some area. Patient often got a fever and could not eat well because of this condition. This, this is what I have done at dental office Sometimes I have helped by resident pediatric dentistry from University of Indonesia, so they can feel how to handle patients with a special need. If it's by myself, I still can get help from the mother or caregiver to stabilize the position. Case number five is the Brahman, uh, Brahman de Lung syndrome or Cornelia de Lung syndrome. For this case, uh, for this patient, I use general anesthesia with full uh, mouth rehabilitation. This syndrome is rare, is rare occurrence and affect between one per 1,000 and one per 60,000 neonates. Case case number six. This is the case child patient with three Duchet syndrome with specific clinic, clinical symptoms like high pitch cat like cry, mental retardation, delayed development distinctive facial features, small head size, widely spaced eyes, low breast weight and weak muscle tone in infancy. This is my patient who becomes friends. They are very great and talented. Before joining the international competition for special needs, they have a medical checkup, include teeth, ENT, thorax, and laboratorium. 
So the outcome uh, for a special care deficit in Harapan Kita Hospital is to make the rule of hospital-based dentistry in providing treatment for persons with developmental delay or special needs. We know that general anesthesia is the last option to manage dental treatment for special needs. But how to manage patients, adolescents to adults with cerebral palsy, autism, ADHD, Down syndrome with single fracture indicated to endodontic treatment, ganglionabis indicated to extraction, or orthodontic treatment or indicated to prosthetic. So about technique anesthesia for dental procedures are a rarely debated topic. Recommendation, indication, and contraindication for sedation and or general anesthesia in dentistry are not so clearly established. Public scientific evidence are lacking and all the recommendations are therefore based on strong agreement among professionals. So in Harapan Kita Hospital, uh, the strong agreement uh, using general anesthesia. So, in order to provide the rural hospital-based dentistry in Harapan Kita Hospital, we need to improve and upgrading the qualifications such as workshop and to o sedation for STD patients, workshop administration injection for STD patients, and workshop management control or hygiene for STD patients. This is for oral hygiene therapy in Harapan Kita. And we have planned to make a, uh, an STD center at Harapan Kita Hospital. Uh, we already uh, start from, um, to, uh, from uh, last two years by, uh, I went to Hiroshima University and uh, I was a clinical observer for two weeks and also with Sanya. And uh, that's why I really very motivated after I came to uh, there. And of course, I want to make it uh, an STD center like Hiroshima. So, uh, in these two years, uh, I want to upgrade qualification for dentist and our hygiene therapist also. And uh, next year, we want to dental sedation and to already use F dental clinic. And next two years, we want to be a Harapan Kita Hospital to be national STD center. And also, we want always want to make the ambient friendly uh, patient with dental cleaning. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Gibor, for a great presentation to share your experience in treating uh, patients with disabilities and special needs in your hospital. It's very good to find that what you have done a lot in your hospital. <coughs> uh, Dr. Mif Tahul Cahyani, are you ready? Still no sound? Look. Dr. Mifta. Dr. Mifta, are you ready? Or still we go to the unit of energy? See your voice. Try again to speak. Okay, it looks like because the time is ticking, the clock is ticking, so I'm inviting University of Indonesia, Professor Suarezini Sutopo. Are you ready? Professor Suarezini Sutopo from University of Indonesia. No, you are not here. Professor Suarezin Sutopo, you come and go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Please proceed your presentation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to present mm. our case report. It is the removable functional space picture for a boy with test yet number two and twelve public facial type. Uh, due to deformation of facial and cranial during this previous pattern and the <coughs> The PowerPoint from Faculty of Education. 
Yes. Okay. The credit yeah. card of that can be in the last card and the last card. Dr. Melissa, can you show the PowerPoint in the full screen? PowerPoint-nya belum full screen. Terima kasih Center Bode, Dr. Melissa. Dan video desktop-nya di BGMS ya? Video desktopnya di BGMI saja, Dr. Belisa. Video desktopnya di BGMI, Dr. Belisa. Melissa, okay, already. Oh, can you share again, Dr. Melissa? Barusan dari sudah share, tapi keluar lagi. PowerPointnya, the PowerPoint is not share. Dr. Belisa, can you? Uh, we still have uh, enough time. Actually, we are already in the injury time. Okay. How about uh, how about uh, proceed to the discussion, Dr. Arya? Please uh, give opportunity to the stations. Maybe they have some question. If they we still have enough time, we can go back to the University of Indonesia. Yeah, maybe Prof. Suhar Sini can share and also can comment to the previous presentations. <coughs> She's already here and maybe you can share also the achievement in, in your place while uh, commenting to the what we've been, what we've been seeing throughout the places here from Taiwan, from Takusima, uh, please, Prof. Suhar Sini. Despite we cannot see the slide presentation, maybe you can share your opinion or you can share the achievement without presentation. Sorry for the technical problem here, Prof. Suhar Sini. No, we cannot see your PowerPoint. That's why we love to maybe oh, okay. you can share your opinion or maybe your comments to the because we have limited time and technical problem. Uh, can you see the PowerPoint? No. 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 Unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. I don't see that. Dr. Arya? Yes? Uh, I know that Professor uh, University of Hang Tua has a question oh, to yeah. one of the presenters. Okay. University of Hang Tua, please... Uh, you can ask your question right now. Yes, now we open to the door. Ang Tua, please. Thank you. Thank you. Are you here? Yes, we can hear. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dr. Yudhya, from the Indian Civil Industry in the University of Indonesia. Um, I'm going to start from the 
Sound quality is not good. Can you repeat your question? Okay. Sound quality is not Question is, I'm not mistaken, is uh, addressed to uh, Professor Hideo Sato from Kagoshima. He asking about the cooperation of patients dealing with the situation. Can you respond to that, Professor Hideo Sato? Yeah. Repeat again. Cannot... Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you. Please proceed. Please ask again. He cannot hear. Yeah, you are saying about the preparation, uh, the cooperation, the cooperation of the patient when you manage your treatment, how you, how you. Uh, try to uh, make your patient is cooperate with you. Uh, so, you you mean that so in general anesthesia case? In the second case, in the in many cases. Oh, no. uh, or maybe uh. uh Repeat it again, the question. Operation with the patients with uh, Down syndrome who are expanded in the maxilla. Yes. Yes, Dr. Sato. They ask about yeah. the commu like communication, maybe, uh, with, with him, with the patients. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so this patient, so uh, the IQ level, so. Uh, uh, so compared so uh, high higher case so uh, he uh, he can so uh, understand my treatment so <laughs> so I accept uh, uh, the appliance in uh, uh, so normal clinic so it's not so anesthesia case. <laughs> okay. okay. They use all anti-mentally attention for the patient to get the attention Please, 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 Uh, uh, your sound makes some great feedback, so I mute your microphone. That's uh, huge feedback from Hangtua University. 
Okay. Shall we proceed to University of Indonesia right now? Are you ready, yeah. Professor Suharsini? I think yes. Please proceed, Prof. Suharsini. Ten minutes, please, Prof. It's disappear again. Dr. Meli, saya jangan buat-buat terus ya. Kalau sudah itu biarin aja dok. Oke, sudah. Presentasi sudah jalan. Silakan, Prof. Universitas Indonesia. Sudah terlihat presentasinya, mohon tidak dirubah-rubah lagi. Silakan untuk mulai presentasi. The sound level from the University of Indonesia is very low. Sound level is very, very low. Yes. Oke, okay. please proceed. Voice is disconnected actually. I mean, it's not clear. The most clear. From here, I cannot hear anything. Dokter. Uh, Arida. Yes, uh, due to the... It's okay? It's not okay. We cannot hear anything from you. We can see you, but we cannot hear your voice clearly. You don't know why. Okay, but... We have, we have a limited, very limited time. I believe it is extended. Uh, how about uh, I'm asking Dr. Arya to wrap up our discussion and conclude our meeting today before he formally close the meeting. Dr. Arya, how about it? Yes. Yeah. Um, we are really sorry that due to the limited time and uh, uh, thank you for <coughs> But yet, we already see uh, so many good, excellent, excellent presentation and sharing from the Professor Hideo Sato Kakusma and about uh, how to do the monitoring handicapped patient in hope using vet recognition. I can try to summarize some of them, uh, some of the presentation uh, content. Dr. Tania Saraswati. Is about how to manage the management to child special time and about for for Dr. Sin Ming Chen, a National Taiwan University, to involve the oral hygiene. So above all, the, and also a present uh, the presentation from Dr. Yu, uh, Professor Yuki Oda from Hiroshima about how to manage the patient with many. Uh, retardation, mental problem, yeah, and this is all uh, very good that we manage the patient with the special needs, with the special treatment, so they they also who handicap, who have a problem, still can have their rights to be treated properly and appropriately, and we are creating a good team, a good system, and also good facility, and cooperating with the family also. Like uh, experience in the Taiwan, they already make a good system cooperating with the government. This is a very good example that we can uh, try to uh, explore, collaborate, and try to do that also in our practice uh, in every nation in Asia. So I think this is a very good experience, uh, Dr. Aksa. And it's a good uh, initiative from you for the topic. And uh, this initiation can be continued for the further collaboration, for sure. 
yeah, uh, this good practice, this best practice can be uh, more explored and more be learned to be to expand to the other centers. So I think that's all, uh, Dr. Aksa. Maybe you can add something, or maybe Dr. Uh, can you, you want to add something? <laughs> Or maybe think, Rawijaya? I just want to uh, have something. Please, <coughs> uh, I have sent you a survey or questionnaire. Please fill it in and also take some pictures of this meeting and send, through, send me through the, my email. Yeah, we need uh, some survey and questionnaire and photos to report this activity and please dr Arya, proceed to formally close the meeting okay <clears throat> so i think uh, this is a very good uh, session and sorry for the technical problem for the those of suharsini and dr miftahul and also from the question and answer session that we cannot proceed uh, in a good way, so I believe we can continue this, and still we have another station tomorrow. We have a, actually we have a dental, the second dental station also, and and this is uh, we still can continue this collaboration. And thank you for Dr. Aksa also to initiate this uh, issue. I believe that there is still so many issues that we can. Uh, we can do for the next station. So uh, thank you for all. Uh, from let uh, appreciate from uh, Prof. Hideo Sato from Kagoshima, applause, and from Dr. Tania Saskiati from Air Langa, and from Dr. Sin Ming Chen and from National Thailand, uh, Ta Taiwan, sorry, Taiwan University, and Dr. Uh, Professor Yuki Oda from Hiroshima, applause. And Dr. Darmawan Setianto, the Dean of Airlangga University, and Dr. Kiki from Harapakita, and from the team in Kyushu University Hospital also provide the host, the server, yeah, and Fiber. yeah, and also Fiber. the from the audience, the doctor, uh, the doctor from the Hang Tuah University. You can in the next and be the presenter. So I think that's for this afternoon. Thank you again. So Nick, see you in the next opportunity. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Mifta bisa dengar? Trawijaya University? No, no, still no sound. Tetap jaga suara. Trawijaya nggak ada suara. Kang Tua, Mas Ali, ini tadi feedback besar sekali dari Kang Tua. Mohon dibenerin ya. Besok. Itu tombol yang di atas, Mas. Mas Ari. Dua tombol hitam. Thank you, Ya Wahyu. Wahyu, wahyu ya. Terima kasih 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 ya.
Oke, saya lanjut sama Mas Ari ya nanti. Mas Ali, yang harus tuh tadi kayaknya speakernya masuk dari microphone laptop, jadi suaranya jadi feedback karuan gitu. Ya, oke, terima kasih Mas Ali. Halo, FKG UI. Halo. Ya. Apakah Mas Doni di situ? Prof, Prof. Tadi. Ya. Mohon maaf. Ada Mas Doni. Ya, ada Mas Doni. Sudah terlambat. Iya. Kenapa kok? Yesus. Iya. Suaranya terputus. Sekarang bisa terdengar. Sekarang sih masih terputus-putus. Nah, Dokter Miftah juga masih belum muncul suaranya di Brawijaya. Coba. Suaranya yang enggak bagus, Suara Mas Arya. Kenapa? Suara tidak terdengar. Tembak. Terputus-putus. Iya, tadi pas trial kita sempat ngalamin bagus. Tapi pada saat kita sudah mengumpul uh, banyak begini kok, jadi ya terputus-putus. Baik gambar, baik poinnya di share maupun separanya, gitu. Ini posisinya di mana? Nih ya, dari FKG di ruang dekan di sini, eh ruang di Salemba. Salemba, iya. 